Here are the top nine best investment bags from Goyard right now. Hello everyone, welcome back to another mommy review where I review all things for the love of. Today I'm checking out the brand Goyard. In particular, I'm going to talk about the top 9 bags that I think is still worth investing in in this brand right now. And I'll go over the approximate prices, features, and highlights related to these top 9 bags. Now before I get started, if you like the content on this channel, please consider giving this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. It will really help a lot. Thank you so much for considering and on with the video. So Gaillard is a Parisian luxury brand that has been around for over 200 years now. It was founded originally in 1853 and they were best known for their incredible handbags and luggages. I think one of the things that caught my eye about Gaillard is their eye-catching print making and how the print is just like instantly recognizable and just highly desirable. What you'll find in majority of their printing and when you look closely they have this interlocking y pattern with these little dots on it that create this pattern that reference goyard's history as log drivers which i did not know initially before but it's just so beautiful and all the different types of color scheme that they have I think what's interesting about Goyard is that it's built out of word of mouth and referral. There's really no advertising for the brand. I love how it's like a little bit different from the typical like Chanel, Hermes, and Louis Vuitton. It's just something a little bit more understated. It is an internationally recognized brand and still manages to retain high quality craftsmanship, beauty, and exclusivity for Goyard items. On average, the bags cost around $500 for smaller styles up to $6,000 for larger bags. And the price really does vary from color to prints. So in this video, I hope to go over the top 9 bags, go over the prices that you should expect, and what are the features related to it. The colors does make a difference. That's one thing I didn't know about before. Like the basic tote in black or tan will be less expensive than designs that are in blue, green, or yellow, which is the house colors. One of the things that makes this brand so exclusive is that Goyad is not available in retail online. You have to go to one of their select stores. The website itself does not disclose any prices, so I'll try my best to give you an average price or current retail price for some of the bags that I'll be featuring. So let's get started. Number 9. The number 9 bag I want to feature is this Vendome PM bag. The average retail price is not available on the website, but it is approximately around $3,200. It does come in various sizes. This mini version is priced around $3,200 as well. I love how it has a little top handle bag that looks like so chic and stylish at the same time. Reminds me a little bit of like an Alma BB version for Louis Vuitton. It's perfect for everyday purse. You can see it has little feet on the bottom and coverings for the corner with leather. It has the Goyard signature canvas. It has a top zipper, means that can go both ways. And they also have an interior lining that matches the leather as well. And has a fitted pocket on the inside and i know some of the prices depending on the color we range up to three thousand four hundred or five hundred dollars as well in my opinion i think this is such a cute bag that can be great for everyday use i do wish that it had a strap so it could have been a crossbody but who's to say you can't modify it if you want to add a strap on your own on these buckles here I think the mini version, a smaller interpretation, is a little bit cuter in my opinion. But it does kind of go back to recalling Goyard's early trunk making days. Riveted kind of beach wood details that's here. I'm told that there is a detachable strap choice if you like to get a hold of it. I think it's sold separately. But the leather handles do fold down and has interior zip pocket. So that's number nine. Number eight is this Monte Carlo PM clutch. 
The Monte Carlo PM Clutch is priced between $840 to $1,110. The dimensions of this bag is 12 inches in length, 7 inches in height, and 1 inch in diameter. I think it's just a very different take on a regular clutch. It has a snap closure. And the strap, as you can see, is detachable, so you can make it easily into a clutch, as well as possibly a shoulder bag as well. I love the historic trunk element with the wooden panel and the silver bracket corners and rivets. I just think it's a very beautiful touch, and it comes in multiple colors, as you can see here. It's a very lightweight bag as well. A little understated, but if you know, you know. Number seven. Number seven is this Bell Chase bag. It's around $2,100. This bag is exclusive collection of Goyat. Not like a brand new collection. It is one of the more, I think, more sophisticated, luxurious bag. It has a very sleek design, and I love how it has multiple compartments on the inside help you keep a little organized and it comes in an array of colors i think the double handles are just so beautiful different from like a typical tote bag you would see very smart and structured and spacious inside of course it garters the classic goyard print on the outside finish with these beautiful leather handles with that kind of attaches on one of the handle here but just love this sophisticated take on this tote that is priced at two thousand one hundred dollars number six is the belvedere pm bag that i'm looking at here the pm size is two thousand seven hundred dollars approximately and the mm size is three thousand and fifty dollars it's very lightweight which is the one one of the things i really love about this bag it is a very lightweight bag not only that i love a good crossbody it's great for you when you're on the go and it just has a beautiful stylish buckle closure as well it's a little bit different style than you would typically see some people say it's really easy to access the front flap of the bag and the interior has very good capacity. On average, this bag holds up to 82% of the original retail price market on the secondary market, I'm told. And the condition, of course, is very important as well. Uh, I find that over the last year, um, the selling price for these bags has gone up 185% of what is retail prices. So it's a pretty strong increase in demand style ever since the 2020s. It has a single pull through closure the front flap as you can see here which is i i see it as one of the cons because i don't know how that will wear the leather strap over time so that's number four number five is the saint louis gm bag now i know that some of you will be really surprised by this because saint louis is one of the best selling most popular bags from goyad this is probably an unpopular opinion but i just find that totes are a little bit overdone um, there's so many different types of totes in every single fashion house so that's why it's number five uh, the pm size is somewhere between one thousand two hundred dollars to one thousand five hundred sixty dollars and the gm size is one thousand four hundred and ninety dollars to one thousand seven hundred and ninety five dollars so really depends on the size the color and so forth it contains the iconic goya canvas it has a lined interior it's like a perfect carry-all bag and has a little bit detachable pouch that makes it easy for you to grab when you're on the go it is one of the most famous and most popular items from the Goya fashion house and something that's often compared with the Louis Vuitton Neverfold tote bag. It is made from a coated canvas with trim leather and then it also has these luxurious handles. On average, this bag holds around 111% of its original retail price so it has good investment values in general i think the pm size is the more higher demand one compared to the other sizes but 
I think this is a great bag option if you want to try out the Goya brand and you're not really sure and you know that one of these ind individual bags alone will sell almost double in the retail price if you don't like it. And this is meant to be more of like a reversible beach tote bag. So when you go to the beach and when you're done, you can reverse the bag and put your wet items inside. I don't know anybody really does that nowadays, but that is the thought behind it. So that's my number five bag. Number four is the Isabel bag. Now I think the Isabel bag reminds me a little bit of this classic St. Louis bag. It's priced at $2,000. People really love this bag in particular because of the interior compartment. So let me show you the inside as you can see. If you want something a little bit more organized, not just one big compartment like a typical tote bag, this is for you. I think I love the little details that they've included to make it a little bit more user friendly. And of course, it includes the little pouch on the side. And I think this color is just absolutely stunning and gorgeous. That's the Isabel bag. Number three is the Artoirs bag. It's priced between $2,000 to $3,500 or so really depends on the color and the size. The MM size that you see here priced between $2,035 to $2,625. And then the PM size, the smaller size, is $1,725 to $2,245. It can, can be carried by hand or over the shoulder with like this really beautiful leather handle. Of course, it has the canvas facing out. It is reversible as well. It is a nod to the St. Louis bag. However, it is a little bit more structured and secure version with the reinforced leather corners, as well as the zip closure you see here for added security, which is why it's made it up higher on my top nine list. On average, it holds over 84% of its original retail value. There are three different sizes, the Mini, the PM, and the GM. And I believe the Mini proves to be the higher resale value out of all of the bags sizes. All right, on to my number two. Number two is the Saigon PM bag. Now this one is in full leather with these embellished pieces, kind of like, um, and homage to this trunk making signature um, background for Goya but this is the one that probably people see typically this price between for the PM one around 3870 up to 5390 and some specialty made ones are around $7,620 I love the mix of materials and textures a little bit different with like this light wooden top handle as you can see here with contrast with the darker shade of the rest of the bag just looks absolutely amazing it has leather interior on the inside as you can see here carries just beautifully i think the top st stitch strap that you see here can turn it into a crossbody or a shoulder bag and inside i love like as you can see the lemon yellow lining it's just absolutely stunning and along with the wood hardware and the leather reinforced corners and rivets, I think is just a simply beautiful piece of art, which is why I made it on my top nine list on number two, because it's just something unique. At this stage, I feel like when you're looking to purchase a bag from a fashion house such as this, you want something that is different, something that speaks to the heritage and the quality and craftsmanship that they have. And I, this, I think this bag just checks all of those things on the list. And the last one on my top nine list is this one here. It's a 233 bag. This one is prices range from around $5,200 or so. I find that it is such a unique bag from the luxury brand. It features this intricate Goya lock, which is rarely seen in a lot of the other pieces that you see from the fashion house. I feel like it's very stunning like when you first look at it you just it instantly captures your attention it has this sparkling G, goya g look that looks just so elegant and beautiful and the rest of the bag is just as elegant i love the coated canvas with the trim with the leather it includes like 
this intricate strap which can double up to wear as a shoulder strap or extend to full length to make it into a crossbody strap as you can see here. See here you can adjust it and then the compartment is very generous in the inside and I love the little detailings related to different parts of the bag. I think that this tan and black color is just stunning but they also have like a traditional more black one, red one, yellow and it still has a part of the signature Goyad canvas that you can see here. So yeah, this is my top 9 bags from Goyad Paris that I think is still worth investing. Honorable mention include the Goya Plummet Pocket Wallet, which to be honest, I really wanted to love this bag, but based on the size and the wear on it, I just had a difficult time loving it. I wanted to put like at least a cell phone and inside, and I found that it wasn't very generous in terms of space and um, there wasn't a lot of give. So outside of putting my cell phone inside the bag, it just didn't work out for anything else. So I thought it wasn't super functional. And then the other one I considered was this one here, this trunk bag. I've been really into trunk bags. I love how it calls to the Goyad heritage, but it, I think at this price, at this time, it's just not something on the top of my list, but I really appreciate the artistry of it. So those are my top nine bags. I would still consider investing in Goyad right now. Do you agree with this top nine list? Or do you think there are other bags within Goyad that should have made this list? I would love to know. And with that said, I think Goyad overall is just completely stunning and unique bags. I love the elegance, understatedness of it, and somehow is nowhere but everywhere at the same time. I can totally see why Goyad is one of the number one brands with the highest resale values, earning back most if not more than your original investment. Well, that's it for now. Thank you so much for joining me on this mommy review, and I'll see you next time. Take care and stay safe everyone. Bye for now.